Hello, and welcome to Williams Bridge. Today I'm going to be taking Metro North's Harlem Line back to Grand Central Terminal. Williams Bridge is about 30 minutes north of Grand Central, and shares tracks with the New Haven Line until Woodlawn, where the two lines split. My adventure begins with possibly the sketchiest staircase in all of New York City. It's clear that there are repair works going on throughout the station, but these stairs are way steeper than they had any right to be, and with the wet weather, they were quite treacherous. Definitely not a wheelchair accessible station. The platforms here are rather lackluster. There's a ticket machine, a couple LED displays, and some other basic signage around, but there's little else. This is definitely more of a commuter station than a destination. Despite this being on the Harlem Line, only about half of the trains scheduled stop here. Metro North runs a timetable with half of their trains serving the first half of the line, while the second half serves the latter portion. The only trains to stop here are those terminating at North White Plains, about 13 miles north of here. Buying tickets was super easy. Metro North ticket machines have Grand Central Terminal as a default destination, so it's a single tap and go. Metro North was only offering off-peak tickets due to the world event happening at the time, and thus my one-way ticket was $7.25. Soon after buying my ticket, our train pulls into the station. To my surprise, it was one of Metro North's last Bud M3 EMUs. Metro North has been retiring these trains in favor of the more modern M7s and soon the M9As. Seating on M3s is similar to that on M7s and M9s. There is plenty of space between my knees and the seat in front, which is nice. Bud M3 railcars are set up in a 2x3 arrangement, with the standard bench seating as seen on the rest of the Metro North fleet. One thing to note is that none of the seats have headrests, so it can be a bit awkward for longer rides. The padding on the seats is okay, but it's definitely showing its age. A quick stop at Fordham allows us to take a look at one of the interesting design choices on the M3s. Instead of using the now standard single door per doorway, M3s use two doors, which is something that seems more equivalent to a subway than a commuter train door. I don't know why this design choice was made, so if you know, let me know in the comments down below. Also, that bell for the closing doors is a classic and will be missed when these trains are retired. One of my favorite features on M3s, and something that I will certainly miss on trains, is the ability to look out the front window while the train is in motion. There is no secondary door between the cab and the front of the train, or if there is, it wasn't in use, so it's easy to get a great view out of the front of the train. I was able to set up my GoPro here and get some cool footage, although be careful as the guards may ask you not to film. While we're appreciating this view, let's take a look at some stats about our train. My train this morning is Metro North Harlem Line train number 522, and is driven by four Bud M3 EMUs. Each M3 car is powered by four GE1261A2 DC traction motors, producing 160 horsepower each for a total horsepower of 640 per car. M3s are rated for a top speed of 100 miles per hour, but operate at a top speed of 80 miles an hour. Much like their younger siblings, M3s are constructed in married pairs, with each car having a capacity of around 120 passengers. Within each set, one car has a bathroom, although it's not stated if this affects the seating capacity. The MTA began purchasing M3s in 1982 as an update to the already successful M1, and were delivered between 1984 and early 1985. Because of their age, Metro North began searching for replacements and decided to go with the M9, an upgraded version of the M7 currently in service. As we're enjoying the ride, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. Oh, and hit that bell icon while you're down there so you never miss another video. The interior of M3s are still the same as they were when they were first put into service. Some cars have received small interior refreshes here and there, but for the most part they remain the same as their originals. I mentioned earlier that there are bathrooms on board, however they are atrocious. 
I didn't have the opportunity to find one on this train, but from what I can find, they are simply just a toilet in a room. There is no sink or any other kind of facilities. And apparently they smell awful because of the strong disinfectant used by cleaning crews. Soon enough, all of these gripes will be a thing of the past, as Metro North is soon to receive its order of M9As as replacement for this aging fleet of M3s. I actually had the opportunity to catch a ride on an M9 on the Long Island Railroad, and they are wonderful. If you want to see more about the M9, click the link in the top right or in the description below to see my trip report from Far Rockaway to Jamaica. One of the first major landmarks to hit on our way into New York is the Harlem River Lift Bridge, also known as the Park Avenue Bridge. Built in 1954, the 340-foot lift bridge is the fourth bridge to span the river, and is able to lift up to a height of 135 feet to allow for plenty of clearance above larger ships. The penultimate station on the line is Harlem 125th Street. The four-track station is the only station, aside from Grand Central, to serve all three lines east of the Hudson. A few minutes after leaving Harlem 125th, our train bows down into the tunnels below New York City. It's a short 10 minutes after that, and we're pulling into Grand Central Terminal's track 105 on the lower level. Before taking my leave, I decided to check out the main hall again, because you can never get enough of that incredible space. To do so, I headed upstairs and through the ornate passageways of Grand Central before reaching my destination. After a few minutes of appreciating the station, I headed to the exit at 42nd Street, which brings us to the end of today's trip report. If you want to be around when more videos get posted, please hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel and the content I make. I would love to keep doing this for as long as possible, and your support helps me continue to do so. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.